Hello and welcome to another night of readings. All right. Okay, um, I will share my screen now. All right, so today's reading is going to be 42. I'm very sorry, I was quite tired in the last couple of readings. And if you can hear the dishwasher in the background, I hope you're okay with it, but I'm just gonna go into it. Um, so if you're at the, if you were um, here for the last couple of um, readings, you'll know that I messed up with the, numbers, but I'll go back in there and I'll um, edit that. I did that quite early in the morning. All right, so we are doing 42. Paul Veronese and Paola Cagliari studied under the Venetian school and was born 1528, lived until 1588, and was a pupil of Tidian. One has never done well enough when one can do better. One never knows enough when he can learn more. This was the motto of Paul Veronese. This artist was born in Verona, whence he took his name, and spent much of his life with the monks in the monastery of St. Sebastian. His father was a sculptor and taught his son. Veronese himself was a lovable fellow, had a kind feeling for all, and in return received the goodwill of most people. When he first went to Venice to study, he took letters of introduction to the monks of St. Sebastian and finally went to live with them, for his uncle was prior of the monastery, and it was upon its walls that he did his first work in Venice. The subject was the story of Esther, which he illustrated completely. He became known in time as the most magnificent of magnificent painters. He loved the gaieties of Venice, the lords and ladies, the exquisite coloring, the feasting and laughter and everything he painted showed his taste. When he chose great religious subjects, he dressed all his figures in elegant Venetian costumes in the midst of elegant Venetian scenes. His virgins or other biblical people were not Jews of Palestine, but Venetians of Venice, but so beautiful were they and so inspiring that nobody cared to criticize them on that score. He loved to paint festival scenes such as the marriage at Cana, banquet in Levi's house, or feast in the house of Simon. He painted nothing as it could possibly have been, but everything as he would have liked it to be. Into the wedding feast at Cana, where Jesus was said to have turned the water into wine, he introduced a great host of his friends, people then living. Titian is there and several reigning kings and queens, including Francis I of France and his bride, for whom the picture was made. This treatment of the Bible story startles the mind but delights the eye. It was said that his red recurred like a joyful trumpet blast among the silver gray harmonies of his paintings. Mother, one who has written brilliantly about him, tells us that Veronese seems to have come into the world. Veronese seems to have come into the world to prove that the painter need have neither head nor heart, but only a hand, a brush, and a pot of paint in order to clothe all the walls of the world with oil paintings. And that if he paints Mary, she is not the handmaid of the Lord or even the queen of heaven, but the woman of the world, listening with approving smile to the homage of a, of a cavalier. In light red silk morning dress, she receives the angel of the Annunciation and hears without surprise, for she has already heard it what he has to say, and at the entombment she only weeps in order to keep up appearances. Such criticism raises a smile, but it is quite just. And what is more, the Veronese pictures are so beautiful that one is not likely to quarrel with the painter for having more good feeling than understanding. His joyous temperament came near to doing him harm, where he was summoned before the Inquisition 
for the manner in which he had painted the Last Supper. After the Esther pictures in St. Sebastian, the artist painted there the martyrdom of St. Sebastian. And there is a tradition that he did this work while hiding in the monastery because of some mischief of which he had been guilty. At that time, he was not much more than 26 or eight while the great painter Tintoretto was 45. Yet his work in St. Sebastian made him as famous as the older artist. There is very little known of the private affairs of Veronese. He signed a contract for painting the marriage at Cana for the refectory of the, mo of the monastery of St. Giorgio Maggiore in June 1562. And that picture, stupendous as it is, was finished 18 months later. He received $777.60 for it, as well as his living while he was at work upon it, and a ton of wine. One picture it, he is supposed to have left behind him at a house where he had been entertained as an acknowledgement of the curtsy shown him. Paul had a brother, Benedetto, 10 years younger than himself. And it is said that he greatly helped Paul in his work by designing the architectural backgrounds of his pictures. If that is so, Benedetto must have been an artist of much genius, for those backgrounds in the paintings are very fine. Veronese mar married and had two sons, the younger being named Carletto. He was also the favorite and an excellent artist who did some fine paintings, but he died while he was still young. Gabriel, the older son, also painted, but he was mainly a man of affairs and attended to business rather than to art. Veronese was a loving father and brother and beyond doubt, a happy man. After his death, both his sons and his brother worked upon his unfinished paintings, completing them for him. He was buried in the church of St. Sebastian. The plate we will look at today is the marriage at Cana. Can you see that in here? No, this is a Monet. Okay. Nice. Okay. So. The marriage at Cana by Veronese. This is not like the humble home in which the biblical wedding occurred, but it is a fine picture nevertheless. This painting is most characteristic of Veronese's methods. He has no regard for the truth in presenting the picture story. At the marriage at Cana, everybody must have been very simple. And there could have been no beautiful architecture such as we see in the picture. In the painting, we find courtier like men and women dressed in beautiful silks. Some of the costumes appear to be a little Russian in character, the others Venetian. And Jesus himself wears the loose everyday robe of the pastoral people to whom he belonged. We think of luxury and rich food and the splendid house when we look at this painting. And as a matter of fact, nothing of this sort could have belonged to the scene which Veronese chose to represent.